heading into West Valley, Utah today to a terminal. I have to pick up my, uh, my vehicle's International Fuel Tax Agreement sticker. Uh, for short, they call it the IFTA sticker. It's, uh, it covers Mexico, the 48 contiguous states of the U.S., Or 
goes from Idaho, Utah, Idaho, Utah. That's the second Utah, welcome to Utah sign I've seen today. And I'm going the same direction. Unless I'm in the twilight zone, in that case I'll probably keep on seeing welcome to Utah signs. Groundhog Day. Speaking of groundhogs, I think I saw it was either a marmot or some kind of fat little groundhog uh, sitting on its haunches or its butt uh, with its back to the freeway and it's looking toward this uh, uh, vast field full of cattle grazing. And uh, this little brown, meaty looking furball creature uh, was just watching these cows as if it was his favorite thing to watch. Really cute. I think it looked like it probably weighed around 15 pounds. And, I mean, I'm guessing it was about 18 inches tall sitting on his butt from butt to the top of his head. So, anyway, I can see it from a distance standing out against uh, its surrounding. It clearly was a little woodland creature. So I got a good good glance at it. So. You know. Lots of red-tailed hawks out here. It seems like they're everywhere. Driving up and down the west coast with these western states. Uh, last month it was the east coast. Not the entirety of the east coast, but a good portion of it. Back and forth, back and forth. So, I wonder where I'll be in February. Only the Lord knows. He is directing my steps. That and I see his blessing and favor in spite of the challenges. Sometimes the challenges actually, usually, oh, I can almost say always, actually, yeah, always. These little challenges, setbacks, work out to my advantage. sermon this morning, uh, boy, blanking on the pastor's name, Pathway to Victory, I think, is his ministry, anyway, talking about the faithfulness of God and how he cannot lie, it's against his character to lie, he is truth, he is faithfulness, yesterday, Eternity past, eternity future, and ever present, ever faithful, all knowing. He's everywhere, everywhere in the universe, and whatever universe is beyond, he is everywhere. Mountaintops, bottoms of the ocean. With each one of us, aware of every one of our thoughts and challenges and emotions and victories. He knows. He's omnipresent. All-knowing. Anything we pray and ask for as children of God, so long as we pray according to His will, the answer is yes and amen every time. Testify to that as truth. I had my uh, L5 was out in my the bottom of my spine, just above my sacrum, and I was praying one day and said, "Lord, I can't be driving truck with L5 being out of place, and I can't."
can't afford insurance. At that time, I couldn't afford insurance. And, uh, within five minutes, not even five minutes, I mean almost like within a minute, that L5 on its own popped back into place. And uh, I was sore for like a week or two after that because of, it had been out for so long. But all that lower back pain I'd been experiencing for years was gone. And after two weeks of soreness, uh, I have not had a problem at all. Uh, and i got lots of stories like that. So, you find out what God's will is for your life. You know, you, you ask Jesus to confess with your heart, confess with your mouth, believe your heart. Jesus Christ is Lord. That's uh, Romans 10. Bible. And truly make Jesus the Lord of your life. Find out what his will is for your life and walk in it. And whatever is according with that will of God for your life, pray in accordance with it. God will give you whatever you need to fulfill his calling in your life. God was calling me into driving this into this industry of truck driving. I did not want to do it. And uh, I just the Holy Spirit was all over the idea. So I said, okay, if this is your will, then I'm going to need a couple thousand dollars because it's going to take a uh, at least a month or two of training before I can have my license and start making a regular income. And uh, that day, I got a phone call from a friend who was moved by the Holy Spirit to write a check for $2,000. Said he was mailing it to me the next day. Explain that to me. How is that possible? Find out what God's will is for your life. And then ask the Holy Spirit. Help me to pray what I should be praying. I don't know what I should pray. I'm just, you know, <laughs> I'm just a meat suitcase, you know. <laughs> I'm a box of rocks without you. I, I, I'm not saying I'm stupid, but I just don't know as I should know. And uh, God, you know everything. You know your perfect will for my life, and I... I have a glimpse of it, but I don't know as I should. Help me to pray according to your will, and the Holy Spirit will. He's, the Bible says he's the helper, he's the comforter. Jesus promised, you know, he'll send the Holy Spirit, and, and he has. And Jesus said he will remind you of all things, and everything that Jesus spoke and said and did, the Holy Spirit will remind you of these things, Jesus said. So Jesus ascends to the Father, the Holy Spirit comes there to Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, fills up the disciples with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's still here on earth, ministering to us. So I do pray and talk to the Holy Spirit all the time. back. 
Then it was a very urgent prayer. And within seconds of asking, I, was, I didn't even get up from the chair I was sitting in. I prayed, and within seconds, that L5 popped into place, and there was like an adjustment that went up my spine, and it, it when it reached my uh, the top of my spinal cord, where you know that's your atlas up there, where it interacts with your with the base of your skull. Uh, when it hit that atlas and then hit the base of my skull, my whole head jerked left. Like, I mean, it's bones. And uh, God, He fixed my back within seconds of me asking, because I was asking in accordance with His will. Don't doubt Him. If you're asking in accordance with His will, there's nothing holding Him back from saying yes and amen. That's His heart. Jesus said, if a, if a father on earth knows how to give his child a good gift, the son asks for, you know, a good gift. Is his father going to give him a bag of trash? No. He's going to give him, give him a good gift. And so if we who are evil are able to give our kids good gifts, how, how much more the father who's in heaven, when we ask him according to his will for our life, for what we need, He has just been waiting for us to ask. Jesus also said, you don't have because you don't ask. Or, when you do ask, you ask with wrong motives in your heart. Like, Lord Jesus, give me a billion dollars, or give me a, you know, I want a, a Ferrari, whatever, you know, or a Lamborghini, or, you know, I don't know. I'm not saying those things could never be God's will, but if it's not God's will for your life, then your motives are wrong, and God's not going to answer that prayer, and it's not His will for your life. So, I'm repeating myself. If Jesus is not the Lord and Savior of your life, if He's not your first love, uh, make Him your first love. Ask Him to become your first love. Ask Him to lead you into repentance, to search out your heart and deliver you of all iniquity and all darkness, to purge you, to wash you, to be white as snow on the inside, and transform your behavior on the outside, that you'd be purer than the wind-driven snow. And He'll do it. It's not self-effort. It's not legalism. He'll give you the grace and the power. If it's alcoholism, he'll lead you out. If it's addiction to nasty, gross stuff, and you just cannot stop doing that nasty, gross stuff in the secret when no one's watching, and you know it's wrong, cry out to God. Lord Jesus, I cannot stop this. I'm sick, I'm twisted, I'm, I'm evil. I'm an inexhaustible fund of evil. Deliver me from me. Set me free from that. He will do it. Brother or sister, I promise you that. I can tell you that for my own life example. Well, I used to be an alcoholic. I tell you that much. If I wasn't at work, I was home drunk. You could ask my wife and kids. They'd say, yep. But about six years ago now, God used... A woman who was mute, unable to speak, and uh, borderline catatonic, spoke a word of knowledge to me at a Bible study, a men's Bible study. She was there because, you know, just to kind of keep her involved with activity. She never said or did anything, and, but her husband asked her to look around and what would the Holy Spirit say to each of us and all of a sudden her expression turned from a, a wandering gaze 
to looking down the barrel of a cannon, ready to fire. And I'm telling you, men got up from the table and left because they knew what was about to happen. And she began to read people's mail, so to speak. All of a sudden, she knew the secrets of everyone's heart at that table. And she spoke right to my drinking problem. And none of those dudes do. I had them all snowed. They had no idea. The Holy Spirit showed this woman and opened her mouth and she spoke. And it, up, it, it was terrifying. And it was humbling. But from then on, I was delivered from the craving of alcohol. And when the temptation came to go buy some, I could hear her voice in the back of my head saying, Alcohol, no. Vodka, no. Faithfulness, yes. Never forget that. Glory to God. God's able to set us free from the deepest addiction. We just have to want to be set free. And then you got to want to stay set free. It's like the Israelites wanted to be set free from their oppressors in Egypt after being slaves for 400 years. So God used Moses, God's mighty hand through Moses, through all those plagues against Pharaoh in Egypt leads the Israelites out of slavery toward the promised land. Then the Israelites wanted what was comfortable and normal to them and wanted to go back into slavery because that's what they were used to. So once you've been set free from whatever is binding you, you have to stay free. And that's, that's largely your choice to fight against temptation. And temptation, the victory is yours because you're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. But you have to fight for it. Satan's no dummy. God doesn't tempt him. Satan sure as heck does, though. So, when temptation comes, call on Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, I'm getting beat up on. I'm just full of temptation here. Set me free from me. And this is this a demonic attack? I pray that you'd attack the demonic and set me free from that. In Jesus' name, amen. Anyway, I better wrap it up. This video is already 23 minutes long. Uh, make Jesus the Lord, Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of your life. He was born of the Virgin Mary. That was predicted like 700 years before it happened by the prophet Isaiah. His crucifixion and resurrection from the dead was predicted again like 700 years before it happened. I think it's Psalm 22 that describes Jesus' experience on the cross. Again, written way before it ever happened. And Jesus is quoting it on the cross. If he's not your Lord and Savior, he's going to be your judge. He is your judge. He is my judge. Check out the book of Revelation. Read chapters 1 through 4. That's an eye-opener. He is the judge. Make him your Lord and Savior. Make him your first love. The one you think of when you first wake up in the morning and the one you're thinking of when you go to sleep at night. And then all day long, pray without ceasing. Sing, be grateful, thankful. I know what his will is for your life. And pray according to it. And anything you ask for, his answer is yes and amen. Alright, peace out.